In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Well, good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us. I'm Father Chris Alar from the National Shrine of the Divine Mercy, uh, one of the Marian Fathers of the Immaculate Conception, along with Father Mike Gately, Father Don Calloway, and others, my good friends. And so we are here today to finish the parish mission. If you have not made the other two days, that is absolutely fine, because today is completely independent. We're all not going to do as much talking today. We're going to do more praying and healing. So if you are able to stay with us shortly after Mass, we'll take a quick break. We can run out, use the restroom, or grab a bite. And then we will come back, and we will do a short talk um, about healing, and then we will bring out the Blessed Sacrament, and begin the healing and prayer service. So we hope that you'll be able to join us. So brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to my God and to my brothers and sisters that I have to Wipe out of my offense. 
thoroughly wash me from my guilt and of my sin, cleanse me. A heart A clean heart create for me, O God, and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not out from your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. A heart for you are not pleased with sacrifices. Should I offer a burnt offering, you would not accept it. My sacrifice, O oh God, is a contrite spirit, a heart contrite and humble, O oh God, you will not spurn. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of heaven and glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of heaven and glory. Even now, says the Lord, return to me with your whole heart. For I am gracious and merciful. <coughs> For the Lord Jesus Christ, King and Lord. The Lord be with you. And A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. While still more people gathered in the crowd, Jesus said to them, This generation is an evil generation that seeks a sign, but no sign will be given it except the sign of Jonah. Just as Jonah became a sign to the Ninevites, so will the Son of Man be to this generation. At the judgment, the Queen of the South will rise with the men of this generation, and she will condemn them, because she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon, and there is something greater than Solomon here. At the judgment, the men of Nineveh will arise with this generation and condemn it, because of the preaching of Jonah, they repented, and there is something greater than Jonah here. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, good morning, everyone. So today we hear about the reading of Jonah. We all remember as children reading the story of Jonah the whale, right? Okay, so I have a question for you. As Catholics, do we read the Bible as literally true? No. No. Yes. <laughs> now go home tonight and cut off your right hand. <laughs> because does the Bible not say if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off? And didn't I just say that we must read the Bible as literally true? Okay. Again, as we talked last night, this is why men going through Catholic formation, unlike any other religion, have to study philosophy, Greek, Hebrew, the original languages of the Bible. You don't have that in the formation training of pastors and other religions. We have to go through as priests to learn the original language. Why? Because as we talked last night, if you were here for the Mary talk, what does it say about Mary having children? It says that Jesus had brothers and sisters. If you were here last night, I talked about this. Because in the English, it says Jesus had brothers and sisters. Oh, that must mean Mary could not be a perpetual virgin. No. The original language Adelphos in the Greek, or Ah, A-H in the Hebrew, can mean close relative. Could mean cousin, it could mean stepbrother, or stepsister. He didn't have a word to separate. In the original language, the Ah from the, or the brother and sister from the close relative. <clears throat> so why do I say all this? Because here's the issue. We do read the Bible as literally true, but the word literally means different in English than it meant to the ancient authors. In the writing of the scriptures, the literal true meaning is the meaning that the author is trying to convey. Now, ultimately, who is the author of the gospel or the author of the Bible? The Holy Spirit. But who is the instrumental cause of the Bible? The scribe, whoever, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John for the Gospels, Paul for the Epistles. So what we have to understand about our Catholic Bible and how we read it is we read it as literally true. And what literally true means, the message the author is trying to convey is true. 
So let's go back to that passage of cutting off your right hand. What is the literal true message God is giving through that passage? If your right hand is causing you to sin, cut it off. The literal meaning, meaning the meaning the author is trying to convey, is if there's something in your life causing you to sin, you've got to get rid of it. Is it a boyfriend or a girlfriend? Is it a certain relationship? Is it um, a computer that is absorbing your life? Is it drugs? Is it alcohol? Are there things in your life that have consumed you that have become your God? That's the literal true meaning of that passage. If there's something in your life causing you to sin, get rid of it. But we don't read the Bible as literal lists. Meaning that we actually take a saw <clears throat> and we saw off our hand. That's the literalist interpretation. So literally true, if there's something in your life causing you to sin, get rid of it. But we're not literalists that we actually take a saw out and cut it off. So you see the Bible is literally true, the message the author is trying to convey. Now let's look at, we talked about Adam and Eve last night. As Catholics, then we have to believe that Adam and Eve were actually real people. I'm not hearing enough of an answer. Yes, this is right in scripture. Now I'd like to point this out. Let me tell you. Um, I'll point out, okay, I have no problem calling a spade a spade. You remember when the first church scandal broke in 2002? You all remember Katie Couric? She couldn't get fast enough to the parking lot of the Boston Chancery's office when that scandal broke. There were satellite TVs. There were TV news cameras. They couldn't get there fast enough to report that message to the whole world. But I want to know where Katie Couric was five years earlier when the scientists, at, I think right here at Cal State Berkeley working with scientists in the UK, genetically proved, genetically proved that every living human being alive in the world can be traced back to one woman. That confirms the story of Adam and Eve. Now, where was the news then? Where was the front page big satellite cameras with the big announcement, the Christian Bible has just been authenticated through science? You don't see it. Now let's go back to Jonah and the whale here. Jonah and the whale, what's the literal true meaning of that? Repent. Repent. <coughs> we must repent turn of our ways. Even in Divine Mercy Sunday, which I talked about last year, you get this huge grace of wiping your slate completely clean, completely clean from head to toe. Not only on Divine Mercy Sunday do you get the complete forgiveness of all sins, but you get the complete wiping clean of all the punishment due to sin. And punishment I use loosely because it's more like loving discipline. But God is offering on that day, just like the Old Testament day of Yom Kippur, or the Day of Atonement, the one day of the year that you can get cleansed not only of all sin, but all punishment, God is giving to us. But it's not a free ticket, or a rabbit's foot, or a magic wand that says, I can continue just to do whatever I want, and I can get all this beautiful grace. I'm going to continue with my affair, I'm going to continue embezzling money from work, I'm going to continue cheating my neighbor, and cheating on my wife. Doesn't work that way. Why? We have to have a rectification of the will, a repentance, and a desire to change, or none of that grace is available. That's the literal message of today's gospel. Is it that Jonah literally got eaten by a whale? Well, that could be a literalist interpretation, but the literal meaning is we need to repent and everything. But I'll tell you this science has proven that this is possible. That you could literally be in it. Don't know if it was a whale or possibly a different fish of the time, but it is absolutely, definitely possible. Could have been a whale shark. Could have been very, very possible that this could have happened. Science has never disproved the Bible. You all know the crossing of the Red Sea? Oh, that's just fable, Father. 
Well, really? Well, there are evidence, there is evidence of chariots, Egyptian chariots there in the center um, of the Red Sea. Do you know, um, what about Noah? Oh, well, that's just fable, Father. You ever hear of Dr. Ballard? Dr. Ballard discovered there in the Black Sea that this used to be an area that 5,000 years ago was a civilization that was suddenly and instantly swallowed up in water by a great flood. And so these are things the Bible has never, ever contradicted, or I should say science has not ever contradicted the Bible. And so we have to stop thinking that this is all fable. It's not. This is a true story that our Lord is giving to us in scriptures that has not yet been proven or disproven by the Bible. And so we have to realize in our faith that yes, there's a difference between a liberal interpretation and a literalist interpretation, but nonetheless, this is the word of life. Now the word of life is the first step. The second step is giving us the food of life. We live in as a body, soul, composite. And so we've been given the word of life here. In a minute, you're going to be receiving the food of life. And it's through the Eucharist that our soul is fed. And it's through the Eucharist that we're now going to receive that we are open to our body. Remember, our bodies need food. Why do we not think our souls do? And so if you can stay with us in the Eucharistic healing service, we're going to receive, most importantly, the Mass. We're going to receive Holy Communion, feed our soul, and then if you can stay with us, we're going to bring all our prayer petitions of the ills of the mind, body, or soul before our Lord. We're going to bring up the blessed second. We're going to come around and we're going to bless you who are here. And we're going to ask our Lord. We're going to place our petitions at his feet. And we're going to give to him. Remember, the key that Jesus asks us is to trust him. Even in the midst of all our suffering, all of our problems, all of our difficulties, what our Lord asks is trust. Trust, trust, trust. It's easy to say, it's hard to do, but through the Eucharist we can. So we absolutely hope that you can join us, take a short break after Mass, and then we will all bring ourselves forward at the foot of the Lord, even if your loved ones are not here. This is what people don't understand. Even though your loved ones are not here, all of creation is present before the Lord at the Mass, and all creation is under the providence of God. Bring your loved ones, even if they're not physically here, to the feet of of our Lord's throne. In mind, body, and soul, we're going to ask for healing. And you can be their proxy. You come on their behalf. If your, your son or daughter is away from the church, you are their proxy here today. You can stand in their place asking the Lord to shower mercy upon them. And that's why we're here to finish the mission. And we hope that you'll join us because there's nothing more important than what we're about to do right now at this Mass. Let us stand now and offer our petitions to our Heavenly Father, for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for his health and his intentions. Let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For all of those here at the Sacred Heart um, Parish community, for blessings upon Monsignor and all of the volunteers and those members of administration here, to bring the blessings of God to the people, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For the elections last night, so that we will follow the Catholic consciousness and to vote properly in terms of the ethics and the morals of the Christian faith, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For all of those who are not going to be present with us today for the healing service, that we may be proxies to bring our loved ones to the throne of Christ, and ask for healings of mind, body, and soul. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for all of our members of the Association of Marian Helpers, who help us spread the message of divine mercy in any way, word, deed, or prayer, that all those members who have joined with us, our Marian fathers, in praying for each other in the world, for blessings upon them and eternal life granted to them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our and for those intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our Heavenly Father, as we come before you, we ask for healing 
of any ills of the mind, body, or soul. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We offer you, O Lord, what we have given to be dedicated to your name, the justice for our benefit you make these gifts a sacrament, so you may let them become for us an eternal remedy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I will be doing a special Eucharistic prayer of reconciliation. And this prayer is what we are offering for those who attend the parish mission in healing of any ills of the mind, body, or soul through reconciliation to our Lord, as the message in the gospel says, of repentance and rectification of the will. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just that we should always give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you do not cease to spur us on to possess a more abundant life. And being rich in mercy, you constantly offer pardon and call on sinners to trust in your forgiveness alone. Never did you turn away from us. And though time and again we have broken your covenant, you have bound the human family to yourself through Jesus, your Son, our Redeemer, with a bond of love so tight that it can never be undone. Even now you set before your people a time of grace and reconciliation. And as they turn back to you in spirit, you grant them hope in Christ Jesus and a desire to be of service to all, while they entrust themselves more fully to the Holy Spirit. And so, filled with wonder, we extol the power of your love, and proclaiming our joy at the salvation that comes from you, we join in the heavenly hymn of countless hosts, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, beginning are ceaselessly at work, so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray, upon your people's offerings, and pour out on them the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, and we, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, 
handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice, filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and <coughs> drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead. And looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you who are who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, and Gerald, our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Faustina, and with all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then, free at last from the wound of corruption, and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. <clears throat> Through him and with him and in him, him. O oh God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
At the Savior's command and for by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days. And by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, we send to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away
Let us pray. O oh God, who never ceased to nourish us by your sacrament, grant that refreshment you give us through it may bring us an ending life through Christ our Lord. Okay, well, God bless everybody. Have a great day. Remember, if you cannot make it, we hope you can. We have 40 minutes before we start. Um, even if you can't make the first talk, you can still come to the first prayer service. We won't talk too long, and then we'll bring you the blessing sacrament. But if you can't make it, God bless you. Please stop on our table on the way out. We just got a new load of free prayer cards, pamphlets. If you know people, grab a stack. Uh, if you work in any ministry, take the prayer cards with you, the pamphlets, uh, Divine Mercy. Um, just real quick also, too, we have the CDs and DVDs out there. In our book, we're going to talk about healing. Where in the world is God's mercy in the midst of such suffering? And although the book is called After Suicide, there's hope. It's not just about suicide, it's about any kind of loss, suffering. Um, we sometimes can't get over it, but we can get through it. And we list the spiritual principles um, that are available for you to be able to get through these tough times. Also, I will be in the confessional uh, shortly afterwards uh, until the first talk, and then we have to break for the talk. So I'll be able to do about half an hour in the confession if you'd like to come to the sacrament. The Lord be with you. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan. And all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, Immaculate Heart of Mary, Saint Faustina. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless everybody. Thank you.